apply? Good evening, everyone, and welcome uh, to our online to our online service tonight. Uh, thank you for being a part of it, and uh, we would love for you to leave a comment uh, if you if you're watching on Facebook for a prayer need. Um, if you're watching on our website, there should be a there should be a box uh, or a comment card um, where you can fill out for a prayer request if you have one. Um, I'm gonna pray real quick, and then we'll go ahead and get started. De Dear Lord, thank you for this day, and I thank you for allowing. Uh, us to have this time together, Lord. I pray that uh, throughout the next few moments that uh, they, they do not hear me, Lord, but they hear from you and they hear the message that you have to bring. In your name I pray. Amen. Again, uh, again, good evening and thank you for being a part of it. Um, when Pastor Michael asked me to to uh, do this service a couple weeks ago, I, uh, I immediately started thinking kind of about what I wanted, to, uh, what I wanted it to be about and uh, what I wanted to preach on. Um, I had I've been going through uh, I started last fall going through a daily devotion with a, with a couple of my with a couple of my good friends and um, so I just I went ahead and looked forward to uh, what today's was going to be and to get an idea of kind of what I want you know g give me a good starting place and uh, and see if that's where the Lord led me and I did and I, I went I went you know, into that devotion and uh, I read through today's through today's message, and I uh, I really liked what it was saying, and I feel like it fits pretty good with with today's time. So I'm going to read you the message real quick that comes from that devotion. The title of is the title of it is excuses, and it says that Moses was an Israelite saved from death as an infant. His parents hid him, but when they, but when that was no longer possible, they placed him where the king's daughter would find him. King's daughter adopted Moses and raised him in the Egyptian palace. Forty years later, Moses ran away from Egypt. Forty years more passed, and God told him to return to Egypt. It was time for his family to leave oppression behind and the journey to the land that God had promised. It was a great assignment, but Moses had a list of reasons as to why he wasn't the right man for the job. God saw right through the excuses. God made sure Moses was qualified. Moses went back to Egypt. God might call you to step away from your comfort zone and do what he wants you to do. Uh, it will be frightening. You'll have plenty of excuses, but God will always give you the qualifications that you need to do something important, especially if it's for him. Live through the awkwardness. Let God help you through the problem areas and watch as the impossible becomes possible. You know, so I, as I read through that, I, it gave me you know, the point that, of where I wanted to start. And I was uh, I was sharing last night with my wife, and I and I had I had you know made, had my title for the sermon, and I felt great. And I sat down, and I had, you know a couple of days ago, and I had written the whole sermon, and I had written out what I wanted to say, and I share it with her. And she says, "Man, that sounds like something I read the other day." And uh, then she throws this line at me: "God does not call the qualified; He qualifies the called." And when she said that, I was like. Man, that's exactly what I was wanting to say. That's exactly what I wanted this message to be. You know, we as Christians, I feel like there's a lot of times that we stray away or we, we run away from sharing the message with people because we don't feel qualified. And so that raised the question, is, well, why, why do we as Christians feel as though that we must have some sort of qualification 
when it comes to speaking to people about God or speaking to someone or sharing with someone. You know, a couple things that came to mind for me was fear. You know, we as Christians, are, and even me, myself, a lot of times we're fearful of what might come of the situation. We're fearful of, of what if the person isn't receptive. We're fearful of, you know, what if we get too far in or get in over our head. You know, and then another thing that came to my mind was comfort. And that's, you're, a lot of times you're taking a step out of your comfort zone. You're taking a step away from, from really want, you know, pushing somebody to figure out, are they in church? You know, do, are they religious? Are they in a walk with God? Are they, put, are they, are they strengthening their walk with Christ? And you know, taking yourself out of that comfort zone is hard. Uh, I talk about it a lot with with, with the with my, the buddies that I do this devotion with. We meet a couple, you know, at least one night most of the time, or we try to get more than more than one. And we talk about the taking that leap of faith or taking that step of uh, out of that comfort zone, even if it's for somebody that we don't know, somebody that we might meet in a grocery store, somebody we might meet at a gas station or a gas pump. And so, you know, I know that for me that is one of the biggest things that that I deal with. And it's not that you know. I do. I, there's times where I feel like I'm not qualified to do that. There's times where I feel like I'm I'm overstepping my boundaries by doing that, you know. But in the message we read that Moses, you know, Moses thought the same thing. Moses thought Moses thought that he was not the right person for the job, or that he wasn't qualified, you know, that he was not the right person to return to Israel or to return to Egypt. And you know, I look I, you, you look in the Bible in, in Exodus chapter four verse ten, and the, and the Bible says. That it says, but Moses replied to the Lord, "Please, Lord, I have never been eloquent in the past or recently or since you have been speaking to your servant, because I am slow and hesitant in speech." And I think about you know you can relate that to uh, I think just about anybody. There's times where we hesitate. There's times where we you know just just walk away from those situations. And I and I you know I've sat back and I thought about it a lot. Is what if we haven't what what if we didn't walk away from those situations what if we you know took those to what if we took that chance and took that opportunity and went head first with it you know what if we if we're in the grocery store and we see somebody and and you know God puts it on you to you know just to say something or just to see are they going to church on Sundays or are they attending a Wednesday night group or are they you know or do they even have a walk with God you know and if we and if we push that situation or we we take our we take the time to just ask that question. What could come of it? You know, I think back to a couple months ago. Um, I had a good buddy text me one night, asking asking to you know to start this Bible study, and you know he he's told me many a times that there was that there was times where he was like it, you know that his girlfriend would ask him, Hey, have you texted Brett yet? Have you asked him about that? No, I haven't, but I will. And you know, no, I haven't, but I will. And after you know a couple times of that happening, he finally texted me, and uh, it was it was late. It was real late one night, and for some reason I was still awake, and you know that that was the uh, that 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 brought me to my knees. And I was laying there in the bed with Haley, and I told her, you know this this is this is something that I've been praying for for a long time, and you know well, what if he wouldn't have taken the step. You know, what if he wouldn't have, you know, t- gone out of his comfort zone? I mean, I, I've been you know, really good friends with him since I was, you know, six years old. You know, and, and, and asking that question to somebody that, that you're in that close of a relationship with or a friendship, you know, it can be tough. But what if he wouldn't have done that? You know, now, five and a half, six months later, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. We wouldn't have reached the people that we've reached. It's gone from just us two to three and four people, and, and we're hoping that it, that it continues. You know, so just uh, you know, just him taking that step and asking that one question, even though it might have pushed him out of his comfort zone, you know, it, it got it, it. It's led a. It's led us to meeting you know, at least once, if not twice. You know, even when we're not meeting, we're we're still talking about you know, we're still talking about the devotions on a daily basis, and it's it it it's helped me. But more than that, it's you know, or it's helped him, and it's helped. But it, more than that, it's helped me. You know, it got me back into my into my quiet time with God. It got me back to where I needed to be, where on a daily basis I'm in, I'm in a devotion and I'm spending that time with, where it's just me and God. And so, you know, that that comfort sometimes it's hard to push out of that comfort zone. But just like Moses, there are times where 
as Christians, you know, you, you think you're not qualified for the job, but God has another plan. You know, I, if you would have, you'd have told me three years ago that I would be standing here tonight, I would have told you you were crazy. If you'd have told me three years ago that I was, that, you know, a year and a half ago I would have announced my calling to preach, I would have, I would have told you, you know, somebody's lying to you because that, 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 that is not it. You know, and, and while I'm still not, you know, while I still fail every day, you know, I, I believe that God has called me to this, but it took a lot for me to get out of that. Out, it took me. It took a lot of me to push myself out of that comfort zone. You know, it took a lot of me. It took a lot for me to, you know, take that first step. I'll never forget the day that I uh, that I finally announced my call to preach. I had met Pastor Michael for lunch, and I had told him that I, I had told myself that day that you know I was I wasn't going to hold it in anymore. I was going to let it out. I was going to I was going to tell him. And we left, and I couldn't. I got home that night, and I finally did. I finally told my mom. And, you know, it, it took that one step for me to get out of that comfort zone. You know, there's going to be times that we believe that we are not qualified, but in reality, you know, God has put us in that situation for a reason. You know, maybe it's that we have a, that we do have a personal relationship with that person. Maybe it's that, you know that we can say something to that person that, that they need that is needed to be said for a long time, and God knows that we're the right person. God knows that we are, you know, we are the person that, that is supposed to tell them that. Maybe, you know, maybe it's that that God knows that that person needs to hear it from you. Maybe it's that you know they've heard it ten, twelve, you know, fourteen times. Maybe they've, you know, it, it's been told over and over and over. Maybe they've been asked to come to church over and over. But maybe it's just they need, they need to hear it from you. You know, maybe it's that they need they need that that relationship with you, the, the relationship that you already have with them. Maybe that's what they need to bring them, you know, in, into the walls of a church. You know, maybe is you know somebody's questioning their faith. Maybe that at that time in their life, you know, there's a lot of questions that have come about, and, and you know, they don't know whether they're saved or whether or not. But maybe they, you know that they need to hear that and maybe that you know you speaking it is the way that you mentioning it or you bringing it up is the is something that get that gets people back or that gets a certain person or anybody back to their walk with the, with with the Lord you know just because we don't feel like we're qualified doesn't mean that the Lord doesn't think we are uh I don't I don't think that there I don't think that there's anybody that you can truly ask you that ask them if they think they're qualified to share the word of God on a, on a daily basis because everybody's going to fall short, you know. But at that given, the Lord has called you or called them or called me at that time to share what He has put on your heart. You know, just as God did with Moses, maybe He calls you. Maybe He calls you out of your comfort zone, just as He did with me when I, when I made my call to preach, or just as He did with anybody. You know, I, I think about it a lot, and and my my mom will tell you the same thing. You know. I think that when she stands behind this behind this pulpit on a Sunday morning, that's out of her comfort zone, you know. But God called her to do it. I'll never forget when she told me that she was going to, and I was like, "Mom, you, like, you 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 think that that, that the Lord's calling you to do that?" And she said, "Yeah." And I was, <laughs> you know, I I was blown away. I, I would never have imagined that my mother would stand behind a pulpit, not because of the, not because of anything that she's done, but just because of knowing my mom. I never thought that this would be her calling. But it is. And I think that the people in our church will agree with that. You know, but but just because it's out of your comfort zone doesn't mean the Lord's not going to be there with you. That doesn't mean the Lord's not going to help you, you know, as you as you walk through that journey. You know, if you don't feel qualified, that doesn't that doesn't mean that that, that the Lord's not going to put you in a situation, you know, to to minister. That doesn't mean that He's not going to put you in a situation where, you know, that He thinks you belong. You know, I, it, it can happen on a daily basis on a daily basis with anything. You know, I, I think I think back to it, and I think back to all of, of many many of things, and I didn't feel qualified to do what, to do what I've done. There's times that. You know that I share with people, and and I still feel, you know, I, I can I can still feel the Lord working. I can still feel the Lord in me. 
I can still feel the Lord working through me, even though I might have gone into that situation and not and not have thought that I was the best person for that job. You know, when every time Pastor Michael texts me or asks me to to share on a Sunday or a Wednesday, I still feel like that that you know there's times that there's people that are more qualified than me to stand where I'm standing right now. But you know, the Lord the Lord has spoke to Pastor Michael, and the Lord has spoke to me to where I feel like this is the you know, where I'm supposed to be. You know, and when you're working for God, He's going to give you the qualifications that you will need at that time. You know, I've always said the Lord's not going to leave you stranded. The Lord's not going to not going to leave you in the middle of a river without without a, without a boat or without a paddle for the boat. You know, He He's going to be there with you. He's going to walk with you, and He's and He's going to He's going to be through that entire journey with you. You know, whether it's uh, whether it's sharing one time at a youth group, whether it's you know, preaching on a Sunday morning, or whether you feel led to, you know, to move into a new position in the in, in the in the church, the Lord's going to be there with you. The Lord's going to walk through that journey with you. He's not going to leave you stranded. You know, and I I believe that as long as the, as we as His servants will trust the Lord and trust that when we are working for God, that God is working for, you know in our favor and working for us, then we are going to be successful. You know, whether and success can be measured in so many different in so many different ways, but we are going to be successful in what we are doing at that time. You know, as long as we believe that the Lord is on our side, then whenever we, you know, reach out to, to someone, the Lord, the Lord, had, the Lord already knew that was going to happen. The Lord has His hand in that. If you know, whenever you decide that, that it's time to take a step and move into a new direction, and maybe it's a dip, it's a different position in the church, or maybe it's you know leaving. You know, a position, and and waiting to see what happens. You know, the Lord, the Lord's going to be with you through that journey. The Lord's going to, as long as you are working for Him, the Lord is going to work through you. You know, and I always think, and I, and I think back too that, you know, even though you might feel you might not feel qualified, you know, the Lord is going to make sure that you are qualified to handle any situation in which you are going to face. And that's why I really liked the title of of, the, of this. You know, whenever Haley said it to me last night, and I and I, you know, I always say this, but uh, kind of threw a wrench in my plans. I, I always feel like I got it all hammered out. I'm like, man, I got this. I, you know, I'm ready to go. And then when she said last night, you know, God doesn't call the qualified; He qualifies the called. And and I believe that is that's more true than anything. You know, I don't think that there's anybody that can certain that can sit here and safely say that they feel like every single day when they stand up or wake up. Or walk out of the door that they are 100% qualified to do everything they're going to face that day, you know. And 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 that's that's in a job, that's in life, that's in anything, you know. But as long, but when you are serving the Lord, if you just believe and trust and and, and understand that He is there, that He's going to see you through it, that He's going to make sure uh, that whatever He has placed on your heart, you know, comes to fruition. You just have to believe it. You know, I, I believe that the Lord is good, that the Lord is, is has His hand in all that, and uh, whether or not you feel as though that you are qualified, as long as you follow the Lord and, and what He has led you to do, then then you're then the situation that, you, that you're handling at that time is going to come out in a positive manner. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to pray for us real quick, and then I have a couple announcements at the end. Uh, dear Lord, I thank you, and I thank you for the time, Lord, uh, of getting to share, and I thank you for. You know, every, every I thank you for all the blessings that you've given us, and Lord, even though we're you know we're, un, we're in unprecedented times where you know we're having to go through a, having to go through a Wednesday night service on a Facebook live, Lord, but just the the fact that we still get to worship the Lord and the, and the fact that we still get to praise you, uh, I, I thank you for the message that you've placed in my heart, Lord. And I pray that if there's anybody that is watching this or watches it in the future, Lord, I pray that the, that this this message just gives them a a comfort and Lord to understand that that you don't always call the people that you think are the most qualified but Lord you are going to qualify anybody that you call to do it to, in, into a ministry that you call into a situation and I pray Lord that if if anybody has any questions about their faith Lord I pray that I that they, they don't go another day without without finding those questions and I pray that you just keep us safe I pray that I pray for the safety of this county and this community I pray for the safety of this state, Lord, and I pray for the safety of this country as we as we uh, as we continue to move through all the unprecedented times. Lord, I thank you for the for the many blessings, and I thank you for the for the opportunity to share tonight in your precious holy name. I pray, Amen. 
Uh, Pastor Michael wanted me to to remind you that for the rest of this month, uh, our in person will, our in person services will be on Sunday mornings only at ten thirty. Uh, this Sunday, Pastor Michael's dad, uh, Mr. Donnie Wilkes, is going to is going to be preaching uh, in our in our in person service at ten thirty, and he's also going to be online. Um, and for our prayer request, uh, please remember Miss Dot Aiken. Uh, and, and everybody else that is sick. Um, again, if you have a prayer request, and you, if you'll leave it in the comment box, uh, if you're watching on Facebook Live, or if you're watching on our website, if you'll uh, if you'll leave it, on, if you'll leave uh, if you'll put it in, in the prayer box there. Uh, and if you need to, if, if you want to go to the website, it is a, it's a centerbaptist.com. Uh, thank you all for listening. Thank you all for tuning in. And uh, I pray that the Lord blesses you as, you as you go on your way the rest of the week. Thank you.